Christmas is right around the corner. And please believe me when I say that a gift for your kid should also be a gift for you. A lot of people want to make Christmas all about the kids, but I'm here to tell you that it really is best for everyone if you think of yourself also when you're buying your kids presents. So today I have a checklist of 10 do's and don'ts when it comes to your kids' Christmas gifts. And if you're feeling a little skeptical about this whole idea, I'm sure that number 10 will convince you. Number one, do not gift your kid something that is too complicated, too advanced, too hard. Not only will they be really frustrated and not be able to do the thing, but you will probably be roped into this really complicated thing that you might not want to be roped into. An example, my son is really into Legos, has been since he was like three years old. He's really good at it. And so it's hard to gauge. It's not really an age thing. You know how they usually will have the ages on the box. It's not really an age thing. It's more of a like number of pieces or the style. So like the Technic Legos are a lot harder than the regular Legos. I had to learn the hard way to really pay attention to his skill level because he always would want to do it by himself. And if it was too hard, he would go however long he could go until he finally hit the point that he couldn't anymore because something had gone wrong. And so then we would have to together take apart the entire Lego usually and then rebuild the whole thing together. <laughs> now I do enjoy doing Legos with him, but not that much. <laughs> like I don't want to be, I wasn't buying it with the intent of doing the whole thing with him. Craft sets or craft supplies could be another example of this. My daughter loves crafts, but I have definitely bought her things that were just beyond what she could do on her own. And really I had the intent of her doing it on her own. So then it turns into me basically doing it for her, right? Have you been there? Like it's more of a pain for you than a fun thing for them. So you can buy these things knowing that they'll need your help and that you're gonna enjoy that process with them. That's great, but don't fall into the trap of gifting them something that you're surprised to now be completely involved and right in the middle of this big thing that you might not be super excited about. Number two, do give your child something that solves a complaint. It could be their complaint or it could be your complaint. An example of this, this year, my mom asked me for ideas. Yes, I am that lucky. I love you, mom. Thank you for that. And I gave her the idea of robes for all three of my kids. You know, the really soft, plush bath robes. I have one, they love snuggling into it. And every single morning, now that it's cold, it's pretty chilly in the house, they complain about how cold it is. They don't want to put a jacket on. I don't want them to have a blanket when they're eating their cereal. It's kind of this whole thing. And so a robe, I feel, would totally solve that problem. It's a complaint that they have. It's kind of this problem for all of us. Perfect, right? It solves that. Another example of this in a previous year, I bought the kids book lights. They're just a little clip on um, amber light. So like it's, it's not harmful before bed and they, it solved the complaint of they didn't like lights out at night, right? Like they want to keep reading a little bit longer, but the rule is like the lights get turned off. And so this book light solved that. It was a solution of like, here, you can have this on however long you want. Like it can recharge. They can have it on even after lights out. Water bottles were the same thing. At bedtime, everyone's thirsty and they need a drink, but they know they need to stay in bed. So one year they each got a water bottle and it's their by their bed water bottle that they thought was super cool. And it's just like this win-win for everybody. Last example, this year, my dad, who also is um, so awesome to get ideas from me about what the kids want. Warm pals, have you heard of those? They're these bean bag stuffed animals that can be warmed or cooled. So you can put them in the microwave and they turn into like a rice bag. We do have one rice bag and it's never enough. Everybody wants it, everybody needs it. I think it's a comfort thing, um, kind of soothes aching legs or whatever the thing is. And now everyone just seems to need it all the time. So perfect, right? Here's this awesome solution, something they'll be really excited about and it's super practical. It solves a complaint. Number three, don't gift them something that's super messy. Now messy is a relative term. You have to decide what that looks like exactly for you. 
for me, I feel like I'm pretty tolerable to certain messes. So I have a friend that just cannot do art supplies, just can't handle it. Markers, scissors, paper, tape, glue, like the whole thing just stresses her out. She just doesn't have that stuff in her house. I love art supplies and that's a huge staple here that I don't mind. Other things that I am on board for are kinetic sand. That stuff is awesome. Play-doh. I enjoy sitting and doing some play-doh with my kids. Um, even the Aaron's putty that's like the little tins or the bigger tins, that stuff is so cool. It never dries out. It's a great fidget. My kids are a little bit older. And in the wrong hands, that stuff would be a disaster. So when it comes to messes, you kind of need to know your kid. You kind of need to know yourself. What are you going to tolerate? What's going to be the plan? Those messier things, I don't have a problem like keeping an eye on. We have rules around those things and that's fine for me. Um, but you just kind of want to be aware of that. If it's going to turn into a nightmare and you just kind of know that, probably just avoid it. The other kind of messes can be a million little pieces. Perler beads are a crafting supply that could get a little crazy. Sequins, a lot of those little tiny things, even Legos, like if that is just too much for you, just be smart about it. Be aware that you don't want that in your house and it's just gonna cause problems. You can just pass on those things. So I have heard of hair markers. The kids can use them to like dye their own hair, I guess, but it rubs off on everything. That is a mess that I don't need. I don't want that. That is a no thank you item for me. I think a sandbox might be my other no thank you. Just like, it's just a no, you know? It's just a no and that's, that's fine. Number four, do give your kids things that you enjoy doing with them. You really don't wanna be gifting them something that you are going to dread every time they pull it out and ask you to play it with them or to help them with it. I personally really enjoy jigsaw puzzles. I have gifted my kids puzzles over the years just knowing it's something that I love doing with them. I love even doing it on my own. It's really something that we can enjoy together and they now, like they have grown up doing these puzzles and they see it as a really fun thing knowing like I will always say yes, pretty much. Like I love doing puzzles. So of course, like I should gift that to my kid because I know I'm gonna enjoy it along with them. Another one for me is games. Like I genuinely enjoy playing games together as a family, one-on-one. -on -one. And so gifting my kids games, it's just a fun thing that we can all do together. Anything that encourages quality time is a gift for everyone. That is a positive thing to have in your home. Maybe coloring books is something. Like if you enjoy coloring, get your kids coloring books and do it with them. It's a gift for everybody and that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find those win-wins. Your kid is winning and you are winning. Number five, do not gift your kid anything that is unpleasant to listen to. It could be a really loud, obnoxious baby toy that needs batteries. It could be an Alexa speaker that never seems to be quiet. It could be a recorder, like a musical instrument that they're blowing into. If you don't want to listen to it, do not give it to them. We should not always be putting our kids first. We should not be making their happiness the top priority at our own expense. <laughs> Find the win-wins. There are just so many ways to make sure that you're not shooting yourself in the foot by getting them this thing. We're halfway through. Please like and subscribe if you're finding this helpful. It's a huge compliment and really supports my channel, so thank you. Number six, do give them things that require no limitations. If as a parent, you generally limit, let's say, screen time, or perhaps you limit their sugar intake. Scratch those things off the list. The last thing you want on Christmas morning is to be telling them no, or to be getting into it over their gift. If you do want to give them those things, just have a plan. So for me, like I'm fine putting a little treat in my kid's stocking, let's say. I give them something that I am perfectly fine with them eating right then and there, all of it. Like I don't feel any need to say no or to take it easy or anything like that. So you can have that expectation going into it. Or if it is something, let's say screens, maybe it's a new video game for an older kid or maybe it's something 
that you just know there are going to be some boundaries. Just think through that ahead of time. Just don't find yourself kind of in this pickle all of a sudden, surprised that like, oh dang, what's the plan here? <laughs> like, they really need to stop now. It's been a few hours. So what's what's the rule gonna be moving forward? Like just, just have a plan in place and that will make it pretty easy. Some things that I feel don't require limitations for me, a lot of things obviously, but books are super great. We love reading books, picture books, now chapter books even for my older kids. Craft supplies for us is a go-to. They can craft as long and as much as they want to and I'm totally fine with that. Outdoor toys is probably another thing. It's just such healthy, constructive thing for them to be doing with their time that I'm never gonna feel the need to limit that. Number seven, don't gift them something that you are overly invested in. Now this might seem a little strange, but sometimes as a parent, we really want our child to have something. Maybe it's a beautiful wooden toy, or maybe it's this really darling sweater or something, right? We really want them to have it and we're actually gonna be a little precious about it, right? So if you're gonna freak out if they lose it, if they break it, if they stain it, if they rip it, if they ruin it, probably just skip out on that item because you don't need that in your life. You don't need that stress, you don't need that headache, you don't need that other thing that you're just telling them no or trying to control what they're doing with it. That's just not something we need to be inviting into our home. For me, years and years and years ago, I bought some wooden rainbows, you know, those really pretty nesting ones. Um, it was a knockoff version just on Amazon, but they were beautiful and I was really excited. Of course, I wanted my kid to play with it, but I also really wanted to keep them nice and like, you know, on display. So every time they would pull them out, I was pretty precious about it and I turned into a bit of a monster if they weren't being really careful with it and Eventually, of course, one broke and I was so bummed and sad about it. And it was just this wake up call of like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't be buying toys that are making my life so stressful <laughs> and are kind of taking away from my happiness more than adding to it. So it is not too late. If you've purchased something that you've realized like this probably is gonna go down that path, you can return it. It's not too late. We still have time to pivot. Number eight, do gift your child open-ended items. None of us want to be wasting money, period. None of us want to be spending money for our child to use something for two seconds and then be done with it. Or every time they pull it out, they're gonna play with it for like five minutes and then it's gonna go on the floor. That is just not what we want. So some of our favorite open-ended toys that we still have like through all these years, dolls, the year I was pregnant with my third, I gave my two older kids these really cute anatomically correct dolls that are just darling. I got a few accessories for them and they're still with all of our toys and get played with, so fun. Hard animals are what my kids call these other little toys. They are the solid animals. They are great for the bath. They are great for the sand. They're great to play along with like building blocks or duplos or anything like that. They are so universal for really anything that are just so much fun. Duplos, I just said, those are like the bigger Legos for toddlers. Highly recommend, highly recommend Legos for older kids. Magnetiles are fabulous. Um, play silks, holy cow. I have had the ones that I bought for nine years now, still working just fine and have been put through the ringer. Like so many <laughs> uses and they're just fine. They weren't even real silk. They were just a cheaper knockoff. You see the way I roll. <laughs> I wish I wasn't, but let's be real. And they are still working just fine. So find open-ended toys that you will feel so happy seeing the use over and over and over again, feeling like it was money well spent. Number nine, don't gift them anything that runs out and becomes a financial burden, refilling or restocking whatever is needed to make this thing work. For example, I have never given my kids one of those instant cameras. They would love them and maybe I wouldn't have this problem, but I anticipate having this problem where they would 
plow through all the film and then be begging me for more <laughs> film. And this would forever be the cycle. It's the same reason why I steered away from a 3D pen this year. Please tell me in the comments, these two items, I'd be genuinely curious. Like maybe this is not a thing. But if the main gift requires refilling, I just, I just steer away from that because I just don't want that dilemma where they're just wanting so bad to keep using their gift, but it ran out so quickly. You know what I mean? Now, I'm all for giving my kids things that are, I'm gonna say consumable, that doesn't necessarily mean eating, but eating, right? You eat it and it's gone, or just you use it and it's gone. So craft things even, you know, like you use it and then it's done, or like it goes in the trash, or do you know what I mean? Like, I love those kinds of gifts because they don't add to the clutter. It's just a use it and it's done. But if you still are left with this like main cool, awesome thing like a camera or a pen, but you need constant more supplies, I don't know. I just think that you should consider that. Number 10, do gift them things that you are not only looking forward to gifting them on Christmas morning, but things that you're just as excited about to have in your home in the coming months and the coming years. <laughs> this would rule out anything that you know your kids are going to incessantly fight over. Anything that's super obnoxious, anything that is constantly breaking and you are having to fix it, anything that adds visual clutter to your life. And honestly, anything that you just flat out dread for whatever reason, you do not need that in your life. You don't need to be inviting that into your home and it's just not even serving anyone. It's not even serving your kid. If it turns into this constant battle, this constant negativity, surely you can realize that is not helpful. That is not what the goal is when we're gifting someone a present. We want our child to be happy they're not gonna be happy if it's making us so incredibly unhappy. You with me? <laughs> so we as parents want Christmas morning to be magical and exciting. Of course we do. We want to make all of their Christmas wishes come true. We want to surprise them with whatever it is that they are so desperately wanting. And a lot of the time we are doing that at our own expense. Now I want all of my kids' dreams to come true just as much as the next mom. And I also realize that that gift, if that gift is going to make my life miserable as the mom, it's not a gift worth giving. An ornery cranky mom isn't helping anyone. So please be considerate to yourself and don't invite items into your house that are going to take away from your happiness. There are genuinely so many ways to have it be a win-win. We want our kid to win, we want us to win. We want something to serve them, we want it to serve us as well. And if you're already having a hard time picking up after everyone as it is without an influx of new things, this next video is for you. I am telling you exactly how I conquered my family's messes without enabling their bad behavior or creating resentment, so make sure to check that out. Thanks for being here and I'll see you really soon.